Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I want to talk about how Bitcoin is not decentralized. And in fact, how these cryptocurrencies or these blockchain cryptocurrencies actually do the opposite of most everything that people think or say that they do. Now, we're going to take a look at some claims of these blockchain cryptocurrencies. Uh, there are a bunch of different claims, but I want to cover three. I want to cover the decentralization claim, uh, privacy claim, and freedom claim. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at decentralization. And from the title of my video, you probably already know that, that uh, these blockchain systems are not decentralized. In fact, they are very centralized. And in order to understand that, we're going to look at the definition of centralization. And that means to form a center or a cluster around a center, to consolidate something, or to concentrate power and authority in a center or central organization. Now, at this point, some people might become confused, and they say, well, Bitcoin and Monero and uh, Dogecoin and all these different coins uh, don't have a central owner, right? There's, there's a bunch of different people participating in the system, and therefore, it is decentralized. But that's not true. And you can think of this like uh, the Google search that's provided. Google search is a centralized search system. Yet, the, the actual computation for that search is actually distributed across the entire planet. So, uh, that provides a, a perfect analogy for how uh, Bitcoin and, and uh, Litecoin and Dogecoin, how all of these different coins work. They are actually centralized systems providing a centralized service while at the same time having the computation spread out across the entire planet. So that means uh, that if I'm going to uh, do a transaction, that I can't actually be separate from Earth for this. So let's do an, a thought experiment, and let's say that we all take all of our friends and we go to Mars, and we're going to create a new country on Mars, and we're going to use uh, Bitcoin or Dogecoin or one of these uh, blockchain-based currencies. Uh, we're going to use them for our currency on Mars. And so we don't have to worry about governments or anything else. Well, if we're going to use the same Bitcoin currency, we're going to have to connect up with Earth. And that's a problem because on Mars, it takes approximately 20 minutes for light to go from Earth to Mars and 20 minutes for it to go back. Now, it's not exactly this because uh, the, the amount of time that light takes is dependent upon the orbital position of Earth and Mars. And so it's normally between something like 5 and 20 minutes. But let's say 20 minutes uh, just because uh, that's what people will encounter. We're going to have to wait. If we're going to send our transaction, I'm going to go and buy milk on Mars. I'm going to send this transaction to Earth, and that's going to take 20 minutes. It's going to spend 10 minutes, approximately 10 minutes, going through the Bitcoin uh, blockchain system. And then another 20 minutes to get back to Mars for the store to know that, hey, this transaction went through. That round trip is around an hour, right? 40 minutes round trip plus 10 minutes on the computation. That's crazy. And that's just Mars. If we go further out than that, uh, things just get incredibly worse, right? If you're in on, uh, you know, Omicron Perseid 8, right? It'll take hundreds of years for the transaction to go through. And why is this true? It's because Bitcoin is centralized. It's one of the most centralized monetary systems that human beings have ever created, right? You cannot get outside of the system. If you say, okay, we're going to have our own separate Bitcoin system, well, then it won't be Bitcoin. It'll be a fork of the original Bitcoin on Earth. So that means that Bitcoin is centralized. In fact, if you think about this, let's say that uh, we take bags of cash of United States dollars to Mars. Well, we could have a perfectly fine economy using the paper United States dollars. In fact, the, the United States economy could collapse. The dollar could disappear from the Earth, and we could still have a fully functioning economy on Mars using United States dollar bills. And that's a really interesting thing to think about because that means that the United States dollar actually is less centralized than Bitcoin is. It's actually a more decentralized currency than Bitcoin is. We could actually have a separate economy using the same dollar. So all of that to say... 
Bitcoin, and not to just pick on Bitcoin here, I'm picking on all blockchain-based currencies. These currencies are centralized. They require a consensus, a global consensus to work. Without that global consensus algorithm, the system does not work. So that means that any system based on a consensus algorithm is going to be centralized. So what do we say about Bitcoin? I mean, if it's not decentralized, but it's still not owned by a single company or organization. So what can we say about Bitcoin? Is there a word for this? Yes, there is. It's called distributed, right? So the, the service that's being provided by these blockchain-based systems is centralized, but the computation is distributed among different computers across the earth. And we can look at the definition of distributed here. The first definition here doesn't really apply to us, but this computing definition, having at least some of the processing done by individual workstations and having information shared by and often stored at the workstations, well, that perfectly describes these blockchain-based systems. The actual computation is all independent, right? Someone who's doing mining on one part of the earth is completely different from a miner on another part of the earth. And these miners often have copies of the blockchain with them in order to do it. And there's, that's, a, that's a little bit of a simplification, but the, the storage of the blockchain is actually distributed across all of these different computers. So Bitcoin is a distributed or you know, blockchain-based systems are distributed currency systems. Uh, distributed computation systems. And so that's a much more accurate thing to say than to say decentralized, because de to say these things are decentralized is completely false. It's, it's just not what these things are. So let's take a look at privacy. Now, one of the things that people think is that, oh, because it's not a, a central bank currency, I can't be traced, I can't be tracked. Now, that's now, if you're a technically minded person, you know that this is absolutely wrong. But if you're not as familiar with these currencies, you might think that they actually give you privacy, but the exact opposite is true, right? Blockchains are public and global, right? So every transaction that happens is public on the blockchain. If you have the right kind of software, you can look at every transaction that has ever happened in all of the blockchain's history. And that means that you can, you can look at everyone's transactions, right? If I know your wallet number in, in Bitcoin, I can look at every transaction that you've ever made. In fact, I can see exactly how much money down to the fraction of a penny that you have. That means that blockchains are the ultimate surveillance technology, right? Imagine that Bitcoin or any of these other coins or even a combination of these coins gets accepted as actual currency. And we use them in our everyday lives. We use them to buy cars, to go to college, to buy food. <laughs> Uh, all of our paychecks are done in cryptocurrencies. Let's say that that world happens. Well, that means that every transaction that we have, every place that we go, everything that we do is recorded on the blockchain. And that is a permanent public record. Every government, every organization, every company, every individual, if they're savvy enough, can look at your life and know exactly how much money you had at any point in your life and every transaction that you've made in your life. None of that is private. It all becomes public. Compare that with the typical systems like the credit cards that we use today using the United States dollar or maybe you have rubles or boulevards or whatever that you use. It's actually you have much more privacy using those central bank currencies. Now, that's not to say that I agree with everything that these central banks do, but I'm just saying you have to look at the comparisons here. And that takes us to freedom, because freedom is very related to privacy. And I'm going to try to illustrate that here. So imagine that all of the transactions that you ever make are public. What are the consequences of that? So what will it mean if every government and every company can just take a look and see exactly how much money you have at that exact second? Well, that means that they're going to be able to adjust the prices for you because this is going to come, this is going to mesh very well with the metaverse that people are so excited about. The metaverse will be a combination of virtual reality and augmented reality. And so what will happen in the future is that if you go to a store or any place that you want to buy something, there won't be physical tags saying what the prices of things are. The price won't be the same for everyone. 
you will see a digital representation of a price tag and special advertisements that are targeted just for you. They are tailored just for you, and they will tell you that this is an amazing thing. But what that really means is that if you have a lot of money, you're just going to pay a lot more for stuff. If you go online uh, in the metaverse to buy an airline ticket to see, to actually physically visit one of your friends or family, uh, they will know exactly how much money you have. They will know if you have a promotion. Hey, you just got a promotion. We're going to raise the prices on you. The price for milk, the price for gas, the price for electricity, the price for airline tickets, all of those things will rise in price. So it won't actually matter that you ever get a raise. It won't matter how much money you make because companies know exactly how much money you have and they will adjust their prices to get the maximum amount of money that they can out of you, which means that you will perpetually be poor that everyone will essentially be the same. There will be people who own all the businesses and then everyone else. Because if you don't own anything, you will have to rent everything. And so that means that you're going to wear these like special contacts or maybe these spiffy glasses. And that's how you will see the prices of things. That's how you will see advertisements for things. Right? And that's how uh, there won't be, you know, special regular printed price tags any longer, right? Everything will be adjusted just for you and they will say that that is so tailored for you and that it's so awesome. But that means that your life will never get better with blockchain-based systems. It will only get worse because you will, no matter what you do, no matter how much money you make, if you win the lottery, suddenly you'll find that everything is more expensive because everyone knows exactly how much money that you have. This kind of transparency is actually bad for society. Now, that doesn't mean that some of these goals are bad, right? In fact, having distributed systems, having privacy, having freedom, actually all of those things are amazingly good. But we need, uh, I think, that we can actually achieve all of these things, right? I'm very optimistic about all of these things. There's no like law of the universe or of physics that says that we can't have privacy or freedom or have distributed systems. Those are actually very great things. I think those goals are actually pretty nice. Uh, but we can't deny reality. We can't just say, oh, well, because this blockchain thing is very new, um, it's going to you know, magically give us all of these things. In fact, as we've just looked at, it actually does the opposite for all of these things. It's probably the worst possible thing to create. It's the most centralized money system that's ever existed. It's the least privacy-based system that's ever existed. It has, the le it, it, it has the ability to actually just remove and completely eliminate freedom from human life. Now, there's one more thing I do want to talk about, and that blockchain-based uh, cryptocurrency systems are inefficient, right? And... Uh, to illustrate this, let's look at Bitcoin. Now, I can't look at every single cryptocurrency system, but we're going to look at Bitcoin because it's very popular. Bitcoin has a maximum block size of four megabytes. And that four megabyte chain or block gets a uh, four megabyte block gets added onto the chain every 10 minutes approximately. And that gives us a processing power essentially of seven kilobytes per second, right? So only seven kilobytes of information can be processed through the blockchain across the entire planet at once. That is 10 times slower than the average United States internet connection. So the average person who's connecting to the internet can have a throughput of information 10 times faster than the entire global Bitcoin network. That's crazy. That's also 600,000 times slower than my laptop. And I have an old laptop. My laptop is six years old. And I can process 600,000 times, I can process information 600,000 times faster than the entire blockchain network. So when people say, oh, we're going to put things on the blockchain, everything will run on the blockchain. You're going to buy milk on the blockchain. You're going to, go to, you're going to go to school and pay for that on the blockchain. That's just not going to happen, right? Like, even with like a 10 times improvement, right? my laptop will still be 60,000 times better than, than the blockchain, right? And it's, gonna, and it's even worse than that because my laptop consumes like 60 watts, 80 watts of power, right? The, the blockchain takes hundreds of thousands of graphics cards using millions of watts of power. 
right? It's the most wasteful system that human beings have ever created. In fact, if you had asked me, hey, Phil, I want you to design a system and I want, I want it to be inefficient. I want it to be wasteful. I would not have been able to come up with this. This is so horribly wasteful. I could have never imagined making something as horribly wasteful as, as the blockchain is. And that's about all I wanted to say about that. 